All right, so here's the beginning for my OLL and PLL tutorials for the Rubik's Cube. Uh, here are the OLL algorithms on paper I have. You can see there's a lot of different positions. 57 positionings, but a lot of them I found are kind of unnecessary. Like the algorithms are really uh, too hard to perform, and it would be much easier just to do a, a few different algorithms. So uh, you're not going to learn all 57. It's probably about like uh, 48 or so. There's a few that's cut out. If you don't know what OLL and PLL is, uh, what it is, it's the orientation and the uh, permuting of the top layer. So basically, like what I have here, um, is after I solve my first two layers, I have a position like this, and I use a specific algorithm like that, and it orients the top layer. As you can see, then at this point, what I do is permute them, but I'm not going to do that yet. Alright. So... Let me just put that back. I just want to set this up for the position I want. Alright, here's a good position. Alright? So the first group is categorized under basically. Well, actually, I don't have the sheet with the category on it. Oh, sorry, I don't know the category's name. But. These are uh, the first uh, two I'm going to show you. You're going to have a cross and one corner solved. Okay, so you have three corners that need to turn. So uh, in this position, what I have are these three corners. They all have to be turned counterclockwise. Whenever you have only three corners that need to turn, they all have to go the same way. It's just the way the Rubik's cube works. So. In this case, all of them have to go counterclockwise. You may have it in a way where they all have to go clockwise. Now, if you are having trouble um, setting up into the position I have, um, here's an algorithm that you can use to fix it. What that algorithm will do is it's going to take these three corners, uh, or, sorry, it's going to take this corner and turn it clockwise, and this corner and turn it counterclockwise. This is going to help you when you want to position uh, and turn your corners the way you want. You'll remember that algorithm if you've uh, watched my blind solving tutorials. Um, if you want to turn them counterclockwise instead, all you have to do is take the, out, the um, parts of the algorithm that have in parentheses, swap them out, and there you go. You'll then turn them the other way. So... This position, you have three corners all turned clockwise. You have to turn them all counterclockwise. All right. The way you're going to look at this is like this. From your top view, you're going to have your solve corner back right here. This is going to be your back over here. This is, of course, your up. Your front is going to have two corners turned clockwise, and your right's going to have two corners turned clockwise. And then you're going to use this algorithm. This algorithm t shouldn't be too hard to remember because it's uh, pretty short. And also, if you know the regular Friedrich method, uh, where it has seven steps like the cross, corners, middle layer, cross, placing the cross, corners, orient corners. If you know that method, um, all that algorithm is, it's just um, the algorithm you use to swap your edge pieces for your cross. Everything made inverse. So it shouldn't be hard to do. So here it is. I'm not going to walk you through it because you should know how to do it at this point. So, as you can see, it's oriented now. Very simple. If you want to see it again, here it is. I've got my three corners all turned like that. Alright, it's not hard to do. That's one of the easiest orientations you can learn. Alright. This next position is very similar to the last one. Once again, you're going to have your cross one corner solved. Instead, um, instead of each corner being turned clockwise, they are now all turned counterclockwise. Okay? As you can see, each corner is now turned counterclockwise. All right? Set your cube up into that position. 
normally you would look at it, uh, your incorrect cubes are, cubies are like this, all right, your corners. Instead, you're going to look at it like this for this next algorithm. So you got your cross right here. Your solved one is on your front left upside, all right, so that's your solved piece. And it's these three that are unsolved. So your right and back have two unsolved corners, or unoriented corners. So uh, this algorithm is even easier because it's used during the regular Friedrich uh, method solve. Like I said, if you know the regular Friedrich method, this algorithm you should be a master of. All right, very simple. flows really well, just like that. Here's oriented. All right, let me just show it again. All corners turn counterclockwise. You have a position like this. All right. So here, um, you have it. So those are the uh, two positionings where you have only three corners turned. All right. Uh, when you're doing OLL, oh, 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 I just want to emphasize this. It doesn't matter what position your pieces are. Like um, like this. Uh, that's bad. All right, like this. Uh, during this algorithm, it's going to turn these three corners clockwise. Um, if I turn this clockwise, it's not going to be solved. Don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. Because it's only during PLL do you solve the whole thing. During OLL, all you care about is taking the top layer and orienting it. Just like that. Like, as you can see, all these pieces still aren't right, but it doesn't matter. I'm still going to use the PLL, and you still use PLL, and I'm going to solve it. So remember, you don't have to worry about where the pieces are. This next position, similar to the others, you're going to have your cross, but all your corners are going to be turned wrong. Alright, there's two ways that uh, this can look. Uh, this way I'm going to show you, the way the corners are turned, you have two here, and two here. Like, the blues are opposite of each other. Okay? You can have a position. You can have a position like this. Right? As you can see, you got your two corners right here, facing this way, and then your two other corners out like this. It's like these are facing left, these are facing up and down. But what you're going to do, in this one, you can have two corners facing left, two corners facing right. All right, that's how you're going to look at it. So two corners are facing left, two corners are facing right. Don't look at it like this. You can do it like this, but I really don't like the algorithm for this. This algorithm, I think, is much easier. All right, you're going to use this algorithm. What that algorithm is going to do, like I said, it's going to take these two corners, turn them counterclockwise, these two corners, turn them clockwise. Okay? The algorithm kind of seems a little tricky to memorize when really if you really look at it it's not that hard to remember because if you just uh, do the second algorithm I showed you which is in normal Friedrich alright do that once alright you get this position and then if you look you're in your position where you have to turn three corners clockwise so just do it again and it's oriented now if you really didn't understand that put that back this algorithm really is just the second algorithm I showed you executed twice so you're doing the algorithm and then you're doing it again the only difference is if you notice it's shorter than those two algorithms uh, put together what I mean is like um, the first algorithm had how many turns uh, one two three four five, so it had seven turns to it this one has uh, 11, so it doesn't seem like it's um, two algorithms put together. The reason is because the last few turns of the algorithm technically are overlapping. This is hard to explain, but really, when I do the algorithm, I do to use RI, okay? All I'm doing is I'm now undoing the, f the last two turns I did. So that's what it really is. All right, I'll try to go into detail on this a little more in the next video. But here are your the first steps to your OL and PLL tutorials. Thanks for watching.